Uh, what we're trying to do here, my purpose, is to educate, empower, and encourage the dementia caregiver so that your journey is as gentle as it can possibly be. Uh, I think a big part of that is education, knowing the enemy, uh, knowing how to outsmart the enemy, very, very important. Um, and so let's get started with specifically learning more about one particular type called Lewy body dementia, which is what my husband had. Here's how I typically describe this in lay terms so that it's, it's pretty easy for anybody to understand. Um, here's what I say. Um, Alzheimer's is the word that's very commonly used uh, almost in place of dementia, but it uh, represents a little more than half of the people who actually have dementia. As far as we know, and the numbers will change depending on where you're reading or what your source is, but the other half uh, of people with dementia suffer from another form. But because Alzheimer's is the most common one, let's compare Lewy body dementia to Alzheimer's. And here's how I do it in very simple terms. This is the day of diagnosis, and this is what happens in terms of progression to someone who has Alzheimer's disease. You simply move down, down, down in terms of degenerative symptoms in seven very predictable stages, and it just is very, very predictable. Um, and that's the story. It's just kind of a straight down. Lewy body dementia is quite a different animal, quite a different beast. And so from the day of diagnosis with Lewy body dementia, this is the experience that the person with, with Lewy body, and I'm going to start calling it LBD, with LBD um, is going to have and the people taking care of them are going to have. It's going to look more like this. It's going to look more like a roller coaster. And it goes up and down and back and forth and in and out. It is very variable, quite changeable. Symptoms come and they go. They vary in intensity. They can come and be very pronounced for a period of time, completely disappear, and sometimes almost never come back. Or they can come back in a, very, a different level of intensity. Uh, and so you can have a very, uh, what looks like a be, you're very, very far advanced into the disease one day, and the next day, all of a sudden, people are asking, is this really what's going on? Are you sure that he has dementia or she has dementia? So it's quite changeable and quite variable, and this is one of the things that makes it very challenging for the LBD caregiver to deal with, because they can, you can fall into the trap of thinking, well, maybe this diagnosis is wrong. Maybe he really doesn't have it. Uh, and no, this is just part of the nature of this particular form of dementia. It's quite variable. So let's go to the lay terms, very, very simple explanation, the five moving parts of Lewy body dementia. Okay, I'm gonna do them in alphabetical order. So this is not in order of presentation of symptoms uh, or severity. It's just alphabetical order, so it's easy to remember. So let's start with A, the autonomic system. Another and maybe clearer word for us to understand this is automatic. This is the part of the brain, that primal part of the brain, the brain stem that's right at the base of the skull, that where our, our body just functions and just automatically, we don't have to, we're not conscious of it, we don't have to make it happen, we just digest our food. Our blood pressure just stays at a normal level when we are healthy. Uh, our heart rate is the same. Our um, uh, digestive blood pressure, heart rate, body temperature, things like this are all a part of the autonomic system. With LBD, the autonomic system can go haywire, uh, and uh, usually it's for a period of time, and then it sort of calms down. Sometimes you can get medications to help, but a lot of times it really is just the disease acting up, and you have to ride that roller coaster for a while and figure out how to keep things as calm as possible. So autonomic is number one. Okay, the second part, so we've got autonomic, now behavior or mood. Behavior or mood has to do with um, things like agitation, anger, uh, 
de uh, delusional behavior where uh, the person is convinced something is true and it really is not true at all. So their view of reality is quite different. Um, there are medications that can help with this, but with LBD, you have to be very careful which kinds you use and in what amounts. Um, and so behavior mood is probably the most challenging uh, for most people who are taking care of someone with LBD uh, because they can, uh, they can uh, really throw you. Your loved one may behave in a way that doesn't uh, match the way they have behaved uh, at any other time in their lives. So uh, depression is another thing. So stuff that falls in the, the psychosis uh, type um, uh, category is going to show up here in the behavior. And so sometimes antipsychotic me medications are used uh, to help try to control these things. Uh, oftentimes, very important to know, these things may, in this category, may actually be triggered by the wrong medication or the wrong supplement. Uh, or something that is happening in the environment that we can modify and we can have a big impact on um, as caregivers. And I'm going to be talking a lot more about that later. So let's go back to the, the original. We've got the autonomic system. We've got the behavior, mood uh, type of symptoms. And let's go to the third one, which is cognitive. This is in the area of uh, m not as much memory for a lot of LBD patients. Memory can be impacted and eventually will definitely be impacted, but not in the same way and often not to the degree as you would see in Alzheimer's. Um, it's the, uh, the cognitive here is going to show up uh, in not being able to remember to do those activities of daily living. Those common things, like you, uh, one day they may walk into the kitchen, like my husband did, and he could not remember how to make a pot of coffee. It simply had just temporarily left him. The ability to do that. Um, it, it will show up with all kinds of different things like visual, spatial types of issues where they simply, uh, their brain is not processing uh, where things are in space. Uh, my husband started, was an attorney, and he got a legal pad one day, and he started writing in the middle of the page uh, as if the margin, the left margin, began in the center of the page instead of at the left margin. He could not see the left part of that page. And I was completely perplexed uh, because I knew nothing at, at that point uh, about what was really going on with him. So cognitive things can show up in a wide variety of ways that are not necessarily like Alzheimer's and they present sometimes in ways that uh, are on a different time frame as compared to other dementias. Things can happen earlier with LBD uh, that you might see much later with Alzheimer's. But here again, they can happen and then they can disappear or they can get much more gentle uh, in terms of their expression. Variable, variable, variable. That's what we always have to remember. So we have autonomic, we have behavior, we have cognitive, and the fourth one we're going to look at is the movement. This is that Parkinson's piece, the Parkinsonian piece. Uh, it has to do with how a person might walk. Uh, do they shuffle now? Do their st are their steps smaller than they used to be? Are they more rigid? Is there any kind of small tremor going on somewhere? Uh, what kind of tremor is it? Is it an intentional tremor where you're reaching and then you start to shake in your hand? Or your, your hand is just shaking when you're not doing anything but sitting there? Those kinds of things uh, are having to do with movement. That rigidity, it can in involve uh, uh, issues with uh, swallowing, and all kinds of things that you might not consider uh, or have thought of that have to do with the way your body moves. Um, the last one is sleep. Of the five is sleep. And sleep disturbances are... Uh, often the very first thing that you might see uh, in an LBD patient, they might develop something called REM sleep behavior disorder, uh, which is RBD. Um, and what that is basically is acting out dreams. It's being sound asleep, 
But when the dream is happening, the person, the body is moving. Instead of being paralyzed like we're supposed to be when we're having an active dream, uh, part of the body is jerking or moving, or the person is vocalizing, just laughing out loud or speaking. Um, they are very, very, their body is expressing exactly what's going on in that dream or part of what's going on. They can even be thrown off the bed. They can hit a bed partner. Um, but various sleep issues in addition to that can also show up such as uh, an excessive amount of sleep or not being able to stay asleep at night, getting up a lot. Um, sleep disturbances, sleep apnea is often quite present uh, early on because sleep is when we are, our brain is cleaning itself out. And so if sleep behavior, sleep problems are happening for years, even decades, like the case of my husband, um, way before way before there's any expression or any identification of a dementia possibly going on, um, that's because the brain has not. There's an accumulation of debris in the brain. It can't get the proper sleep so that the brain can clean itself out. And so you have eventually too much clutter in there and you start getting the symptoms uh, of, of dementia. And so... Let's look at those again. We've got the autonomic system or the automatic system. By the way, that often can show up also as constipation in the digestive system. So the autonomic system, the behavior mood, the cognitive, the movement, and then the sleep. And here's what I want you to notice about my hand. I'm going to step out of the way. This is what LBD looks like. They're coming. They're going. They're low. They're high. They're back and forth. There's one showing up, or two, or three, all at the same time. It's very, very complex dementia. My husband's uh, neurologist uh, told me this, and I want to be sure you get this message because it's so full of hope, that LBD is among the most complex of all the dementias to try to treat and to manage. However, it is the most responsive to the right treatment done the right way and the right management of it. And management is what falls in our ballpark, caregivers. That's what we're in charge of. And then picking the right doctor who either already knows how to medicate and treat this, this uh, form of dementia with its many complex and moving symptoms, or a doctor who's willing to learn and a doctor who's willing to listen to you and honor and respect you as you are gathering knowledge about Lewy body dementia and how to manage it. So I thank you for your time and I hope this five moving parts description has helped you understand Lewy body dementia just a little bit. And I hope to see you later on the same channel, Caring for John. Bye now.